For over the last two and a half decades, the Ford Expedition has been the quintessential American three-row large truck-based SUV for big families out there who need to carry a lot of people or tow heavy loads. Now, back in 2018, Ford finally introduced an all-new fourth-generation Expedition that replaced a platform that dated back to 2003. And when it came out, it really set the bar high in this segment. However, since then, a lot of new competition has come out from GM and, of course, the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. So for 2022, Ford has given the Expedition a pretty significant overhaul. This week, as you can see, I'm testing out this XLT Expedition Max painted in stone blue and as you can see from the styling it's been updated front and rear it got a completely redesigned interior with new tech features and all the trim levels now come with additional power to keep the Expedition extra competitive so as you can see this week we're driving this Expedition Max and the big question I want answered has Ford managed to make enough changes to the Expedition to keep this model fresh stay tuned to find out Now, before we talk about the styling changes this year, I wanna show you guys what's powering the Expedition under the hood. Now, Ford was one of the first manufacturers to go with engine downsizing, and for 2022, that stays the same. And what you're looking at underneath the hood is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6 engine. This is actually the lowest output of this engine in the Expedition family, and the XLT trim and the XL trim uh, it makes 380 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. That's an increase of about five horsepower and 10 pound-feet of torque versus last year. If you guys go for the Platinum trim, you'll have a 400 horsepower version of this. If you guys go for the Timberline or the Limited Stealth Performance Package, you'll actually have a 440 horsepower version of this powertrain, which essentially has been lifted out of the Lincoln Navigator and the Ford Raptor. It all goes out through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Expeditions are available with either rear-wheel drive or the company's control track four-wheel drive, where you can also get a locking limited slip rear differential. Um, fuel economy for this model here, the being the max is rated at 16 in the city and 21 on the highway. Premium is not required for this engine. However, if you go for the high output version, Ford does recommend that you put premium in it. This is a truck-based SUV that's built off of the previous generation F-150, which means this vehicle will tow a maximum of 9,000 pounds. In this configuration, I believe some of the trims can tow almost 10,000 pounds. And since this is a max, it's almost a foot longer, which means it weighs in at just almost 6,000 pounds. But let's go ahead and shut the hood and talk about the styling changes for the Expedition because you can see here, when Ford first introduced this model, I wasn't really a big fan of the styling, uh, the direction that they went. And as you can see for 2022, they completely revised the front fascia. We have redesigned headlights. You can see all Expeditions now come with full LED headlights with an LED daytime running light and turn signal. Uh, it's got like this interesting C shape to the LED running light. You have an all new grille this year, which is larger. You have the silver accents here. All the trims are gonna have their own unique specific grill. This is the XLT trim, so it has a more you know mainstream type of grill. Uh, my tester, because it has the uh, XLT uh, value package, it has these fog lights here with some body colored accents. You can see the stone blue color is an extra $500 and it certainly looks good uh, painted on this vehicle. But I'm still not quite the biggest fan of the styling of this truck. I think that the GMC Yukon is probably my favorite looking vehicle. And then I haven't had a chance to drive the new Sequoia. I do think that this vehicle looks better versus the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. But remember, Jeep doesn't have the long version of those vehicles out for public sale just yet. Now you can see looking around the side profile, the Max basically gives you almost an extra foot of length um, versus the regular Expedition. So its wheelbase is around 122 inches long. It's almost 220 inches long overall. I'm sorry, it's a little over 221 inches long. So this is a big vehicle. Not quite, not quite as long as a Ford F-150, but you can see still a very, very large vehicle. Now, looking at the wheels, you can see these are the 20-inch wheels that you get with the XLT uh, Special Edition package. These actually come standard on the limited trim, which the wheels themselves, I like them. They're kind of a more simple design. They have a machine finish with a two-tone look. They're wrapped in 275-55 R20-inch tires. You can get the Expedition with up to, to a 22-inch wheel or an 18-inch wheel if you guys go for the uh, Timberline edition. You can see ground clearance for this model is around 9.7 inches. If you guys go for the Timberline model, they actually raise up the suspension to give you uh, almost 11 inches of ground, of ground clearance. You can really see the extra length of this car when you look at it from the side profile. This is going to give you all that extra space in the third row and in the back seat. Looking at the rear, you can see there's this new silver paint or this new silver accent that connects the two taillight modules together. The XLT trim doesn't give you full LED taillights, but you can see they have been slightly updated. It spells out Expedition in the back, and then there's also a max badge here to remind people that you have the biggest Expedition. And you can see here, looking at the back, this rear glass does open up separately, which is kind of nice. Uh, but if you want to open up the tailgate, well, first of all, there's how you open up the rear glass. 
uh, which is from a little uh, button right here. And if you want to open up the tailgate, you can see a power lift gate's included when you go for the XLT high package. And then this is the model that you're going to want to get if you want to carry a lot of stuff as well as people. This will seat up to eight. And you can see with the third row seat up, you get over 34 cubic feet of space, which is a ton of space considering you can seat seven people. Really great storage underneath here. If you want to fold down these seats, you can see just push that button over there. That'll actually fold the second row seats down. And then if you push this button over here, you can see the third row is power folding, which is nice. And if you want to fold down the third row, you get around 75 cubic feet of space. Fold down everything, Ford says it'll expand out the cubic, the cargo capacity to over 120 cubic feet. So that's basically minivan-like capacity. It's one of the reasons why a vehicle like this is so popular with American families. So on the exterior of the Expedition, the changes are pretty minimal, but let's go ahead and hop inside the inside of the truck and see some of the changes that the company has made. First thing I want to show you guys is the key fob. You can see this is the current Ford key fob. It does include a remote start on the fob, so you have to do is just tap that button here. The engine will start up. You can also use the Ford Pass app to actually remote start this vehicle or ping the car, which I don't have access to because this is a press vehicle. You can even shut off the remote start from the fob itself. Now, typical Ford, you also have the number pad over here, which is now electronic. And then if you want to unlock the vehicle, just touch the back of the door handle. That'll unlock the car for you. You can see my tester in the stone blue exterior is complemented by this kind of ivory taupe interior, which you can see this is actually a StarTex material. This is not real leather. It's the upgraded material you get with the 202A upgrade package. You can see the seats are an eight-way power adjustable. You have three-person memory. These are heated and ventilated. Expedition does offer massaging seats. If you guys go for the top trims, you can see this XLT does not have that. It does have the new steering wheel from the Ford F-150, and then you can see nice running boards to help you get into the truck, which at nearly 10 inches of ground clearance, somebody short like myself is gonna need that. Now, getting inside and shutting the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of the previous F-150 chassis. And then if you wanna start it up, the button is where you'd expect it to be. And you can see my tester has the standard displays, which means you have a 12 inch display over here, which uses Sync 4A, which now includes wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. And then you have a traditional analog looking display with a helper screen in the center, which I believe measures eight inches. It's actually a pretty good size. Ford also offers a 12 inch display, a 12.4 inch display, if you guys go for the top trims, which is definitely a nice feature to have. But this layout looks pretty nice. And I also love the wireless CarPlay, which you can see boats up your phone really nicely. You cannot expand this to take up the entire screen, which kind of sucks. But you can see here, you'll have different cards there. You can cycle between different menus and then the Ford system works pretty well. It also includes GPS, built-in GPS, which you can see uh, works looks pretty nice and it looks it works pretty well. It's nothing super fancy. Now, in terms of the materials, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. It's padded over here as well with some chrome accents. The door handles, very uh, F-150-like. Window controls, automatic one touch for just the front windows, not the back. So I suspect the higher trims will include the one touch for all four. The steering wheel, surprisingly, it's a power tilt and telescoping. I wasn't expecting that for an XLT trim, which is definitely a nice feature to have. Lots of buttons for your Ford Copilot 360. This vehicle does not offer cruise, Blue Cruise. You have to go for the Expedition Platinum to get the Blue Cruise. It's the only trim to offer it. Lots of more buttons here for controlling the screen over here. The horn sounds pretty appropriate considering the size of the vehicle. There's some nice little rubberized storage that you could put maybe like some a cell phone over there or maybe a wallet. Hard touch plastic material here, but it is soft touch padded here with a faux stitching. Um, all hard touch plastic down here. Like the way this new center stack looks compared to the pre-refresh model, this 12 inch display is actually a really good size and I think that most people will be happy with it in terms of the look. If I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see it has parking sensors, it has a backup camera. You can also adjust the views of this and Ford does offer a 360 camera if you'd like. This one does not have that feature, which it is optional. Um, dual zone climate control here with your own separate climate controls in the back, you can see three level heated and cooled seats, which I like how it's an actual button. There's also a heated steering wheel, which is nice. Over here, you can see wireless phone charging pad that's included with the 202A upgrade package. This rotary dial here controls your 10 speed auto. It does have a manual mode with, you can adjust the um, gears from these buttons over here. No paddles on the wheel. And then you have a drive mode selector here, which Ford offers several different drive modes from a sport to a tow haul to an eco, normal. There's also slippery sand mud and ruts, and then back to the tow haul mode. So um, plenty of drive modes and Ford's really up the software in this to where it now adjusts much quicker than before, which is nice. This vehicle does come with two glove box. You can see there's one at the top, one at the bottom. This is a bin style. Um, it's not damped, or but it is lined with felt. Um, cup holders over here. Some of this plastic trim here is not shiny piano black, which is nice, but 
Um, I suspect the higher trims will probably give you some wood grain. This is the XLT, it's not gonna give you that. Big center console storage area where you can see tons of space in there. Um, your USB, C and A charging port is right there. The seats are also pretty comfortable, but I have to say, I hate these headrests. They don't adjust to come forward and back and they kind of stab my head a little bit too much. So try these seats out, make sure you like them. I suspect the higher trims may come with the adjustable headrest. This XLT does not have that. Uh, the sunroof you can see is a $1,500 option, but this one does not have it. It does give you a ton of headroom. However, there is a sunglass holder here and then there's some LED lighting, map lighting in the cabin. There's also some blue ambient lighting that you can adjust at night. Uh, but overall the interior, is roomy, it's really comfortable, it offers all the tech that you probably would want, uh, but just keep in mind, some of the higher trims will give you some luxury touches that you might find in a Lincoln vehicle. Looking at the back seat, let's check out the second row because this is a family vehicle and you can see my tester comes standard with the captain's chairs. And what you get here is 41 and a half inches of leg room, which is pretty spacious. In fact, the Expedition's main competitor, the Yukon, offers an extra inch of leg room here, but you can see this is a ton of space already. So you're not gonna really find too many complaints. You can see materials back here are the same as the front. It's soft touch injection molded plastic, padded area over here, hard touch plastic down here, but a ton of storage space, which is nice. Getting back here, you can see there's a nice grab handle to help short people like myself get in. And then when I shut the door, you can see a ton of room. I can just stretch out really nicely. There's a really big open area here to get into the third row. And then these captain's chairs are essentially as comfortable as the front. Actually, I'd say they're more comfortable because the headrest doesn't stab me in the back uh, like the front seats do. And then back here, you can see you have your own set of rear seat climate controls. Uh, so it's got a tri-zone climate control system. You've got rear seat air vents you can see in the ceiling, which is definitely nice. It's important for a vehicle like this. You have power lights over here, an actual household outlet over here as well, cup holders, along with more cup holders in the doors. You have storage pockets over here, which is nice. And then you can see, if you want, you can actually option in an actual bench here where this vehicle can seat eight. My tester here, seat seven because of the captain's chairs, which comes standard. If you want the bench, it's gonna be a $600 extra charge. Now, getting into the third row, obviously I can kind of crawl between the seats, but I'm gonna show you guys how to get back here. If you would rather use uh, the flip and fold feature, just pull this, you can see the seat moves forward and kind of slides out of the way, which is definitely nice. Getting back here, you can see the space back here is huge. Because of that independent rear suspension, the Expedition was one of the first vehicles in this class to actually give you a third row that could actually accommodate full-size adults. And with around 36 inches of legroom back here, you can see somebody my height can get pretty comfortable back here uh, on long road trips, this would be nice. You can also have the option to slide this seat forward and give the rear seat passengers an extra three inches of legroom. But remember, you're gonna lose that in the second row if you do that. In terms of stuff back here, you can see there is map lighting. You have your own rear seat air vents. You have a power recline function for the third row, which is nice. You have USB-C or USB-A charging ports on both sides and some cup holders and some storage. So and you can see also here, the vehicle is wide enough to easily fit three people across. So overall, Expedition is still one of the top vehicles if you actually plan to carry people in the third row that are actually full-size adults. So here we are behind the wheel of the completely refreshed 2022 Expedition. It's been a few years since I actually drove one of these vehicles. And I have to say, even in the you know, company of the new Wagoneer, the new GM triplets, I haven't had a chance to drive the Sequoia yet as of this filming. Um, the new Expedition still drives really nice. This vehicle, remember, comes standard with the company's twin turbo V6. Ford was one of the first people to do the engine downsizing thing. However, we have an additional five horsepower now for this XLT version. I, I kind of wish I was driving the Timberline or the uh, Stealth Performance Package you get on the Limited. But, I mean, Ford gave me one that was more of a mid-trim, and I think this is what's going to appeal to a lot of American families for the, you know, better value that this, this trim gives you. But it's still, this is a $70,000 truck that weighs nearly 6,000 pounds, and I want to see what I can get 0-60 to 60 wise in this vehicle. And you know what? I just got zero to 60 in 5.55 seconds. I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. That is very, very impressive for a model that doesn't have the, uh, the high output version of this engine that you get out of the Raptor. I'm actually really shocked at how quick that time was. I wasn't expecting it to be that fast, especially because we're driving the Max model. The Max model is almost a foot longer than the standard Expedition, so it's gonna weigh a couple hundred pounds more. 
Uh, but still, this is a nearly 6,000 pound SUV, but this twin turbo V6 with the 10 speed auto is an effective powertrain. It's way quicker feeling than any of the V8s that I've driven in the GM triplets, uh, especially that 6.2. The 6.2 is the big dog in the GM triplets, but this engine feels significantly faster than that. Uh, and it may not have the sound of that motor, but still it's a very impressive powertrain. So Bravo 4, but let's go ahead and see what we can get here again. Very quick off the line. 5.86 seconds there. That's with it going slightly uphill versus back there where it's almost on level ground. So 5.7 seconds, you know, average the two out is pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Uh, and remember, the Expedition doesn't offer a hybrid version. They offer a power boost motor that's a hybrid in the F-150, but Ford said that there wasn't enough demand in the Expedition to put that power boost engine here. But I question whether the Stealth Performance Package or the Timberline high output engine is worth it because this model here feels plenty fast. I mean, this is gonna smoke, you know, most people's expectations when it comes to how big an SUV like this can accelerate. I mean, the 10-speed auto, is a Ford and GM co-developed transmission, and it really does a great job of putting this engine right in the meat of its power band. It's never feeling like it's in the wrong gear. Ford has really done a great job with the software tuning of this power, of this transmission over the years. The original 10 speeds were a little bit lethargic, a little bit clunky, uh, and this one here, uh, living with it for a week, definitely huge improvements there I'm seeing. The engine is very flexible, it's very high torque, uh, and it also gets surprisingly decent gas mileage. In my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging around 16 mpg. On the highway, the best I could get was 19 mpg. So I do expect slightly better gas mileage um, from the Sequoia with its hybrid powertrain, or if you guys want the best gas mileage for now, uh, go with the diesel powertrain that you can get in the GM triplets. That's really you know the one that you're gonna want. However, diesel right now is like almost over $6 a gallon, uh, over, almost $7 a gallon in some places in the country. So. The diesel is gonna give you the best you know, gas mileage in those GM triplets, but you're gonna be paying a lot when you actually do go to the pump. But I have to say, this EcoBoost is surprisingly good. And you also, what else is surprisingly good about this, this Expedition is it drives really small. For how big this vehicle is, it's got a tight turning radius. It's got a really comfortable ride and handling balance. The steering in this car feels you know, like the last F-150 that I drove, um, but I have to admit the it's not sporty, obviously. You don't buy a vehicle like this for it to be sporty. But for those of you who don't think you can drive a big SUV like this that's like over 220 inches long, the Expedition actually makes it pretty easy. It doesn't have four-wheel steering or an adjustable air suspension like you might find in some competitors. But Ford has made a big vehicle feel smaller and the ride quality is also really good because remember, Expedition was one of the first three-row large truck-based SUVs to include an independent rear suspension. So it's a really nice addition that Ford included in this model. And it really shows that Ford was kind of the leader. Even though the Expedition got old before the fourth generation came out, this generation, the changes that Ford made, wow, it's fast. That's really quick. That is very, very quick. I'm super impressed with how fast this SUV feels considering the size of it. Uh, and the ride quality, the seats I will say are pretty comfortable, but these headrests in this XLT version, they don't adjust to come forward and back. And I think that sticks out too much for me. Um, so make sure you try the headrest out, make sure that you're okay with how it feels. I suspect the other trims like the Platinum are gonna have slightly different seats and they might have an adjustable headrest. This one, however, does not have that. Uh, the steering also, you know, I like the way it looks. If this is the same steering wheel from the Expedition or the F-150 and I think it looks really nice. Uh, I think it is a good size. It's, you know, a very comfortable car. If you guys are gonna plan to take, you know, families on a long road trip in this vehicle, um, it's gonna get decent gas mileage. It has great visibility. It has good driver assistance tech. This model here with the 202A upgrade package includes their Ford Copilot 360. However, if you want Blue Cruise, you have to step up to the Platinum trim. It's standard on the Platinum, uh, but it's the only trim to give you the Blue Cruise option. So that's something to keep in mind. But overall, after a week of living with it, even though I've driven the new Wagoneer, the new GM triplets, the Expedition can still hold its own. It feels very solidly built. It has a really refined demeanor to it. It drives smaller than it is, and it has a ton of space on the inside. I question whether you need to buy, spend the extra money to get the high output EcoBoost engine. This feels plenty fast enough until at least I drove drive that model. Uh, but really, I'm shocked. This vehicle, Ford made some excellent changes to it for 2022, and I think it's gonna stick. It's gonna keep the 
expedition fresh, especially with all the new competition that's coming out this year. So after spending a week with the completely refreshed 2022 Expedition, this model here may not be the flashiest or sexiest choice in this segment, but I have to say Ford has made some nice key improvements to this vehicle, specifically on the interior with that new tech feature. The standard 12-inch display with Sync 4A with wireless CarPlay was a huge upgrade. And then for those of you who want an even bigger screen, the Expedition offers the biggest in the segment at 15 and a half inches that they essentially borrowed from the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The interior has a ton of interior space. It practically matches that of the last Lincoln um, Navigator, I'm sorry, the GMC Yukon or the uh, Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. This is gonna have more interior space versus the current generation Toyota Sequoia and the all new one that's coming out later this year because Toyota doesn't essentially offer an extended length version of the Sequoia. And really this vehicle drives really nice. It's a really easy vehicle to live with and it's really well-rounded, which is probably why Ford continues to sell nearly 90,000 of these in America every year. It's a really impressive selling vehicle, especially when you consider the fact that it's expensive and gas prices are where they are. Now, if you're looking to buy this vehicle, it is on sale at dealerships now and it starts at around $52,600. That's actually a more expensive starting price versus the Chevrolet Tahoe and the GMC Yukon. Uh, the Jeep Wagoneer is about $2,000 more expensive than this vehicle, um, but if you guys wanna go for the XLT trim, it's gonna cost you at least $56,000. The Max is gonna cost you an extra $2,000 on top, and it's not available if you guys want the Timberline model or the base XL STX uh, package. Now, this particular one here has a couple of options on it. It's got the 202A upgrade package, so the high package as a special edition value package. It has the extra for the paint. This one here, with the options that it has, and it's still missing a good amount of options, stickers for around $69,000. So nearly 70 grand for this vehicle is definitely expensive, but keep in mind, most of the competitors are also priced around this, although we don't have pricing yet on the Toyota Sequoia, the new version. And if you guys want a fully maxed out Expedition, they can cost well over $90,000, which is kind of pushing it into Lincoln Navigator territory. But it's surprising because this vehicle here actually has a bigger screen on the top trims versus the Navigator, which has a 14 inch screen versus the 15 and a half inch screen that you can get on the fully looted Expedition. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Ford Expedition. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.